Hello again, friends. Today's topic, uranium. Uranium is the most fascinating commodity in the world. It can be the source of clean energy that can save us all from climate change, or it can cause terrible destruction when caught up in natural disasters like happened in Fukushima, or could happen when being shot at by idiot Russian war criminals in Zaporizhia, Ukraine. Similarly, uranium can be used to build nuclear weapons. The world has seen them used once before in the Second World War, and if someone ever uses them again, that person has a special place in hell reserved for him. After Fukushima accident caused by tsunami in Japan in 2011, the reputation of uranium took a big hit politically, but has since been improving a lot. Nuclear energy can be the one who saves us and the planet from burning of fossil fuels. For example, here in Finland, where I live, the Green Party used to be against nuclear energy for quite a long time, but have since come to their senses and are now supporting nuclear energy as an energy form. One can only hope we do not see anything like Fukushima again, which might change again how the world feels about uranium. And actually herein lies the risk in investing in uranium. Uranium is a pretty sensitive commodity to new sentiment and what is going on in the world, in the media, in the politics, as you can understand. There are risks, uh, which we all are, at least here in Europe at the moment, uh, painfully aware of. But in regards to politics, one can only wonder what was Germany thinking giving up on nuclear energy and turning to Soviet unions or Russia's or whatever they call themselves now, there nowadays. Uh, fossil fuels as their main energy source. I cannot understand it. I don't, I don't think anyone else can either. And I feel that Germany is in front of meeting nuclear energy again, because they are a little short of other options at the moment, in my opinion. Well, back to uranium now. Uranium is one of the most common elements on Earth. There is lots of uranium around. It even occurs naturally in seawater. To put it very simply, nuclear reactors create heat through uranium and that heat steams the water around the reactors that makes the turbines go round and round and as a result creates electricity. Uranium is cost effective and highly dense source of energy. One uranium pellet size of a fingertip contains the same amount of energy as a ton of coal or 149 gallons of oil. After mining, refining and drying of uranium, you get yellow powder known as yellow cake. Yellow cake is then taken to conversion facility where it is processed to become nuclear fuel. Highest grade uranium deposits of the world can be found in Saskatchewan, Canada. Other countries rich in uranium are Niger and Namibia in Africa, Australia, Russia and especially Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is the world's leading producer of uranium today. Today there are about 440 nuclear reactor reactors in the world producing about 10% of the world's electricity. As said, nuclear energy is tragic in a sense that it is practically carbon-free and very cheap, but has caused disasters in the past even without nature's forces playing part like in Chernobyl, Ukraine. One has to remember though that Chernobyl was a facility built with flaws, and nuclear energy technology has improved a lot since 80s. Even with idiots like Russian war criminals shooting at nuclear power plants, we have not seen a disaster at least yet, and hopefully never again will see a disaster. My hope is that the failsafe mechanisms of nuclear power plants have improved so much during the last 40 years, at par with everything else in technology, that we can be safe even with some idiots living among us. Still, it seems that nuclear energy's good things outweigh the bad things. I believe that in the fight towards carbon neutral world, wind, solar, hydro and nuclear energy are all needed. Cur currently there are around 50 nuclear reactors under construction worldwide, with 14 of them being built in China. In comparison between 2005 and 2021, 82 nuclear reactors were shut down permanently. I have to admit, I don't know how much more electricity can these new ones, new reactors, create in comparison to the shutdown old ones, but I have a feeling we see more nuclear power plants being built in the near future. And if you don't believe in my feelings about this, uh, well then maybe you believe in Elon Musk's sayings. Uh, Elon Musk has just tweeted recently, I quote now, 
Hopefully it is now extremely obvious that Europe should restart dormant nuclear power stations and increase power output of existing ones. This is critical to national and international security. For those who mistakenly think this is a radiation risk, pick what you think is the worst location. I will travel there and eat locally grown food on TV. I did this in Japan many years ago, shortly after Fukushima. Radiation, radiation risk is much, much lower than most people believe. Why invest in uranium? The main underlying thesis of investing in uranium, in short, is this. There has been chronic underproduction of uranium by miners during the last decade or so. Every year the miners have produced less than the demand. This gap has been filled by nuclear power plants buying uranium from the spot market, market from existing reserves in warehouses. This spot market is drying up and has been drying up for a long time now. Financial institutions like Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, of which we are going to talk about later, have accelerated the drying up of uranium supply with their speculative buying. Spot markets has been keeping uranium prices low for a decade, but there is a shift happening. The price of uranium must go up, because if it does not go up, miners are not incentivized to start new productions. Different miners have differing break-even points in, in when it is economical to start uranium mining operations again. Uh, how much the uranium price needs to go up, well, depends on the miner, as said. Difficult to say exactly yet, uh, but what one needs to know is that in overall expenses of a nuclear power plant, uranium is a marginal cost. So closing a reactor because uranium ran out is not an option for any power plant. They need their uranium and are willing to pay also a higher price for it if the situation so develops. What else can affect uranium price? You have seen inflation ramping up prices of many commodities lately, and same might happen with uranium. Also, as Kazakhstan is the largest, largest producer of uranium, if anything were to happen in Kazakhstan, um, it would have major spike effect to uranium prices globally, similarly as wheat prices have gone up due to Russia's unlawful war in Ukraine. I'm not predicting anything to happen in Kazakhstan and for its uranium production, but it was only weeks ago when leaders of that country invited Russian military to shoot at their own citizens who were demonstrating on the streets. Is Kazakhstan under Russia's influence? Well, definitely yes, it is. And obviously Europe is going to cut its ties with Russia and their gas and oil exports due to what is happening in Ukraine. This shortage of fuels needs to be replaced somehow and me and Elon Musk think nuclear energy will play an increasingly important role there. Additionally, many nations have set ambitious decarbonization goals and as nuclear energy has the lowest carbon footprint of them all, it is sure to play a vital role in achieving those goals. So demand side of uranium is also going up long term. As said, there is plenty of uranium around, but mining it cannot be achieved in a week. It takes time and effort to build or restart mining operations, and if there would happen a situation where uranium is running out globally, and miners are slow or late from the start of their operations, well, you all know what happens to uranium prices short term there. They will go through the roof. And this has happened already once before during the 2003 to 2007 commodity super cycle. I can put a picture here and you can see it now. Also, as investing in even physical uranium has been made easier for retail investors after the last super cycle uh, through Sprott, uh, retail investors now can contribute to the rise of companies related to uranium through miners themselves individually or through ETFs. Sprott, for example, currently accounts a bit under 7% of Global X uranium ETF. ETF investors can also be a sort of, sort of a catalyst for even more violent rise of uranium prices in the near future. The financial markets have evol evolved since 2008, and there are more players on the field now as I see it. And also, the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, which is my current vehicle in investing in uranium, uh, is now in a process of listing to New York Stock Exchange on top of Toronto Stock Exchange too. So as the company website states, this can, I quote, help increase the diversity and size of the shareholder base, improve liquidity, 
and support future uranium purchases. Should be an additional boost for the trust's price too, in my opinion. This is the thesis in, in, in investing in uranium. And now let's have a closer look at Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. Objective. The trust invests and holds substantially all of its assets in uranium. The goal provide us, uh, is to provide a secure, convenient and exchange traded investment alternative for investors interested in holding uranium. Management fee is 0.35% plus operating expenses. The trust's price correlates extremely strongly with the market price of uranium, which is obviously important when we want to invest in, ur in uranium. You want to see your investment vehicle correlating practically identically with the actual market price of uranium. The Sprott Physical Uranium Trust is the world's largest physical uranium investment fund um, and only publicly listed physical uranium fund currently in the marketplace. The trust will hold primar primarily uranium as U308 or yellow cake. You remember yellow cake from earlier. Well, how does the trust operate? The trust will create new shares if the number of buyers exceeds sellers. This excess cash is then used to buy more uranium to the trust, inflating the net asset value of the trust. If someone wants to sell their stocks, the trust does not sell its uranium. This is important to know. They don't sell any uranium if somebody wants to sell the stock. Only the trust's valuation will go down. After this, you are basically able to buy uranium at a discount via the trust. Clearly, the discount won't be too big for too long because there are always buyers for discounted uranium. And thus, the price of the trust returns to reflect the actual price of uranium quickly in the market. As said, the price of the trust correlates extremely well with the price of uranium. Well, naturally, it does. This research of mine was influenced by a Finnish contrarian investor, Mikko Leivo who has been a uranium bull for a long time. I read his blog and found investing in uranium fascinating, and after researching it myself too, I agreed largely with his thoughts and naturally invested in uranium too myself. After researching it myself, as I always say on this channel, you always do your own research, even though the idea of your for your investment might come from somewhere else. You can read about Mikko's thoughts in his blog kontraja.wordpress.com and I give a recommendation to listen to episode 274 of Rahapodi podcast by Nordnet, where he recently appeared as a guest. Unfo unfortunately, the blog and the podcast are only available in Finnish. And to conclude here, uh, a little update on my portfolio. I have recently bought a little bit more of Sprott Physical Uranium Trust which we discussed here, and a little bit Alibaba too. But uh, the money I used to buy Alibaba came from selling of the smaller China ETF position I have in my portfolio, the one I'm investing every month. So I emptied that position, took that money that was there, a uh, little bit on the minus side, and I put that money then to Alibaba here. So I wanted to keep the China exposure uh, limited for now. Um, so that the, the amount of money I have invested in China stays basically on the same level it, it was before. So this was it, my take on uranium. Let me know down in the comment section below what do you think about uranium. And uh, yeah, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I see you in the next video. Bye bye.